guys. Before going to this episode, I do just want to really, really thank all of you who has been supporting this series, as this is my 100th episode. And I'm going to remain that for a few weeks afterwards, as with Generation 8 coming out, I really want to focus on that and focus on Wi-Fi Bell. So, a bit of an update, I guess, but just really, like, just for generally when I say thank you, I do believe my channel has moved a bit of a drama channel, which it never was supposed to. And you guys have been supportive of that too, which is incredible. So, yet again, thank you. Really. So with that said, let's hit off this episode. Ooh, what is up you guys, and welcome to yet another episode of Who Was Really Better. This week, we're gonna cover two Pokemons that are on par with one another. One is clearly there because it is my absolute favorite Pokemon. The other one is actually a Pokemon that has been on par with it since its introduction. And um, Kangaskhan, probably the Tauros Jr. of the Generations 1, which really didn't um, carve his good enough niche, even though it was fairly good. Tauros was always better. Same went on in Generation 2, and then Generation 3 finally started carving his niche, and that's in Generation 4 to the Scrappy. Got really good, very, very strong normal type, but fall back this late this generation if you don't look upon his uber evolution of Mega Kangaskhan. But overall, superb Pokemon as a whole. And Stoutland, my man, my favorite Pokemon, and uh, quite frankly, have a really good history with this as it's one of the Pokemon I've used and got recognized for uh, because the way I was using it. Of course, most people know the fall for good reasons. I actually have three titles with Southland in mind, and uh, one of the games it was decisive, so I have a bit of a personal bias here, but that's not why I'm making this episode. I do that because I do want to compare two Pokemon that are on par with another, another because they're bulky normal types with good wall-breaking capabilities. They carve out strong niche in PU, are usable in the higher tiers, but in a Lee aspect they stand out as they're very, very reliable normal types. Probably one of the best ones around if you don't count the likes of Milouette and Snorlax with R. All things considered better. However, between these two, they are close to one another, both carrying Scrappy and both have support moves and really strong offensive move. So with all this covered, we're gonna go over the move pool stats and overarching theme to find out which one of these two are really better. And of course, we're gonna start off with the one introduced first, Kangaskhan. So before covering Kangaskhan itself, we need to cover normal type. Normal type is deemed to be one of the middle ground defensive typing as only one immunity in ghost and a weakness to finding isn't necessarily all bad but they do focus on one thing and that is that you have no real resistances which means that you don't come naturally versus any matchup without taking you know the full output of its damage but at the same time you rarely are faced with actually being hit by super effective damage either however it is for my at least a downside as it does mean that the normal type in general have a tough time switching in and of course the normal type and don't hit anything super effectively either so the stab combination while hard hitting is not necessarily that hard hitting in the very particular pokemon and um, that said though when it comes to kangaskhan stats it is incredible it is so balanced it's so well focused on what it wants to do and it has a really like like i said balance 105 in his HP is incredible, 95 in his attack, which is fair, 80 splits on his defensive stats and speed at 90. Basically, this is a very, very bulky Pokemon with offensive capabilities. Yes, special attack is low as 40, but it might actually only work to its benefit as it does allow it to focus on one thing, being incredible physical. And that's the thing with Kangaskhan, like, it doesn't matter what people say from here on, Kangaskhan's stats are one of the best ones in the game as it does just allow it to be so many things naturally. Its ability speaks for two. Early bird is great for rest talk variant, which means that you only rest for one turn and then you wake up. Inner focus, make sure that you can't get flinched, but the thing that makes this Pokemon great is Scrappy. It means that you can hit normal type or ghost types with your normal stab, uh, damage output. That basically means that you can focus on hitting the things that normal resist instead of actually trying to carry something to hit ghost types also. This means that this combination is allowing you to hit or with a combination of normal stabs you get with finding or uh, ground combination you are able to hit rock and steel types that potentially wall you. And that is a really really rare trait for a normal type and this is what excelled Kangaskhan to be above your average normal type. It is probably one of the best and as covering the league this opened up the viability so much because it does give it layers to be offensive. Um, the other thing we're talking about is move pull because it is one of the broadest I ever had been forced to be cover, and I love that, as um, 
I don't think I'm gonna remove all this broad since Nato King and Queen, which I did over two years ago. So with that said, let's talk about its move pool. Because Kangaskhan's move pool is built on supportive aspects, but a lot of offensive capabilities. It is uncanny, really. I really appreciate this move pool as it just, as said before, small guns maybe not that viable considering the circumstance, even though it is bulky enough to pull some threats, but. In a league aspect, when you have layers upon layers of supportive and workable aspects, Kangaskhan shines here. And we're gonna go over them, of course, as a list in Talis of Aquatail, Avalanche, Body Slam, Brick Break, Circle Throw, Crunch, Disable, Double Edge, Drain Punch, Earthquake, Endeavor, Facade, Fake Out, Fire Blast, Fire Punch, Blade Thrower, Focus Blast, Hammer Arm, Ice Punch, and Beam, Low Kick, Outrage, Power Punch, Well Pinned, uh, Where Poo, Where Pin, Rest, Return, Roar, Rock Slide, Sasmatas, Shadow Claw, Sleep Dog, Substitute, Sucker Punch, Surf, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, Toxic, Wish, Counter, Work Up, Crush Claw, Curse, Jawn, Dig, and Dizzy Punch. So straight off the bat, two things that stands out here. Kangaskhan, while being a speedy Pokemon, has priority, it has Fake Out, it has Sucker Punch, great assets to have, Fake Out more so, since of course, it flinches and makes you, in theory, immune for one turn, which usually means that if you catalyze a leftovers, you get a free type of recovery here. The other one being uh, Wish. The HP stats of Kangaskhan is so high that he's being able to Wish support a team is unprecedented. It is an offensive threat that actually are reliable Wish passing Pokemon. It also has access to like a Whirlpool and it can be really, really defensively annoying. It has Circle Throw, it has Crush Claw. In theory, this means that you can pull a variant of uh, Fake Out to get rid of the likes of Disable. If you know already the move is going to go for it and you know you're speedy, it might as well actually work like that. And um, Drain Punch is, all things considered, a good filler move for it as it does allow it to recover somewhat. The standard sets are a mixture of all typical sets to be honest, though I really like the Curse set. You'd be surprised to know that this Pokemon work with Curse, as it only has to watch out for Pokemon like the Girder, for example, in this tier. Uh, it can go safely for two Curse without being worried of the Drain Punch out speeding it. Of course, it has to watch out for Mag Punch, but plus two defense, Mag Punch isn't that greedy. Overall, Kangaskhan is incredible. It is uncanny how many Pokemon have sleeping on this Pokemon because it is, in the league aspect, as said, very hard to prep for because you can fill so many roles naturally, you can hit stuff naturally so hard and immune pools just allow it to keep on giving. I really hate facing Kangaskhan, I love using it because it is so flexible and just invaluable for a team. As a normal type, it is just not a sponge, it can fret things naturally and just overall is one of the best normal types ever introduced in this game. PU does not do it justice, because in a league aspect, it is by far the top 5 best normal types in this game, because it's so great and so in-depth in justice. So with that said, Stathlin, does it even compare to this beast of a man? Well, both yes and no, I would say. Um, Stathlin's stats are, while focused and balanced, are not as bulky in theory. Uh, with 85 in its HP, which is, you know, it's 20 less. But with 110 in its attack, which is incredible. It's a lot more firepower naturally. Then with a split of 19 in its defenses, which in theory means it has 10 base stands more in its defensive. So it's, in theory, just as bulky, but lacked the HP stance, such of course Kangaskhan. And then we have the speed here of 80. The difference between 90 and 80 are quite big, if you're asking me, and uh, it does mean that Southland, while being a very, very successful wall breaker, can't rarely be a speed sweeper, unless you look upon its abilities as well as Intimidate, Sand Rush, and Scrappy. Intimidate, also for the defensive set, while the least valuable of it, its abilities, it gets it, and it actually works in a league aspect, of course, I wouldn't recommend it in uh, Smog and Tears. There was Scrappy, which makes it just as viable as Kangaskhan is. It does make it infinitely much lower, but it also is a lot stronger than Kangaskhan, so it hits harder, and it can do that naturally. But the thing that sets this Pokemon apart, Sand Rush. Double the speed during Sand, it's, it's tough to deal with. 
it is a really strong ability for any sand team to have Stalin on their team as it is a really bulky Pokemon that naturally comes in on a few matchup really well. It is defensive enough to come in and retaliate quite fast. For me, it's really interesting to see that it can go adamant and barely have any investment investment in speed and still speed Pokemon such as Electrode. And uh, with right investment, you actually outspeed uh, Timid Mewtwo Y and you're able to Oko it due to the Choice Band Return variant. This is something to keep in mind as 80 base speed and in you know, a rush ability uh, with sand is really high. It's not as high as X-Drill, which also stands out for being a Pokemon that is incredibly fast during its um, weather environments, but it's a rare trait to be this speedy and still have st uh, a natural ability to boost your speed by 2. It is actually uncanny. Um, like I said, 2 or 3 Pokemon I do believe carry this, and it's a strong niche to have, but overall, as, as Stoutland is, it is a very strong wall breaker, good defensive stat, but are a bit on the slow side, and it should be called out for that. Same thing here with this move pool. It is not on par with Kangaskhan. It sadly isn't. Stoutland has a lot of benefits, and it does get the right things, but it's nowhere near as broad or strong as Kangaskhan, so those extra attack stats makes a difference here. But combination here are Crunch, Facade, Fire Fang, Frustration, Ice Fang, Iron Head, Play Rough, Psychic Fang, Pursuit, Rest Return, Stomp and Tantrum, Substitute, Super Fire, Thunder Wave, Toxic, Wild Shot, Air Lace, Baby Doll Eyes, Bite, Charm, Spite, Stomp, Jorn, Submission, Rock Tomb, Thunder Fang, and Work Up. It goes without saying, actually, see, I missed this. We also have Retaliate and you know, Giga Impact. Which are worth mentioning as you know, still the damage output is after all a lot higher here but directly here we can see that we don't have any priority which is a really st good strength on kangaskhan's side with a sword and sucker punch same thing with the supporting move here we have baby doll eyes and charm um, this works well with the intimidate set as it does allow you to get really really fat naturally and left over set to get it without actually using baby doll eye which is a priority lowering move is actually quite incredible um, but it's not it's not viable the same way as Kangaskhan sets are with wish and whatnot uh, however we have two things that stands out there as sand rush usually carries of course the likes of not being scrappy so stopping tantrum is great here as if a Pokemon comes in that are immune to return uh, you are not forced to run crunch you can go for stopping tantrum and you will hit really hard anyway the other one that stands out is Pursuit, as, um, well, Pursuit Trapping in Sand is invaluable. You force the switches naturally, and a, a choice pendant Pursuit could be the difference between a win or loss. It actually is for me. Uh, I use Pursuit on my choice pendant, Stalin versus Ayurashi, and um, yeah, I caught it. I caught it on the sand. It was amazing. It was game decisive, and Stalin rewarded me for that. Uh, the fang moves are not to be trusted. Um, it's a great filler move. I've seen people use Ice Fang to, uh, to get with Ice MC even to be able to knock out Landorus. But um, I don't know. It's it's kind of up there as it isn't really that powerful as in its own right. Same with Fire Fang. It really isn't that powerful even though it hits Ferraform for good damage. Uh, the status set is quite simple. You have Return, you have Crunch, you have Facade, then you have Superpower. It hits everything naturally and um, facade is there if you get yourself burned or toxic and it's, it's just as good really but as a whole there are a few things stands out here um i actually have a set with john i think is great uh, we have a scene john and last resort together see john boosts your speed by one and then last resort scrappy is just about plenty for a lot of matchups and it's bulky enough to pull that off because of that infuriating high bulk uh, but as a whole it comes down to this is for southland that yes it's not as um, supportive as Kangaskhan is, but it is absolutely more powerful and has abilities to allow it to be more powerful. And the defensive set with Intimidate are better than Kangaskhan's set, but lack of the priority makes it more unreliable to use at times. But due to Intimidate, it gets an extra layer to it, so it's, it's kind of cool. I like that about Southland. But that said, which one of these really are better? So looking upon these two critically, like, I went over it a few times, I do recognize that um, PU has them in PU for a reason, and they actually do deem them both as good, as really they aren't separated by much, as they are used the same way with Scrappy. Which means I can't value their tiers as much as I usually do for their viability. For me, it comes down to a personal preference, and a personal preference in League. 
And there's the thing. Yes, Kangaskhan is incredible. I can't state that enough. But Stoutland is game decisive so many times. I'm sorry to say it. Um, this is not my bias. Of course it is. But <laughs> it actually is. When I have been prepping with both Kangaskhan and Stoutland, I actually enjoy using both of them. It is very clear what clean cut I give um, Southland. I've used Southland two times with different sets, um, or I've used Southland more than that, but I use Southland two ways. I use a defensive set to be able to shake tornadoes in Arcanine, and I've done that with almost incredible accuracy. Yes, I lost the game with uh, tornadoes, but that Southland was living for 60 turns. That's uncanny, I haven't seen anything like it. And I was actually versus Shiny Sidulion. And I'm really gonna actually link that game down below as it was an incredible feat for Stalin to be going so well in that game. The other aspect being the ones that actually have won me game. Stalin in sand with return is just about enough to settle any game. And Kangaskhan don't have that. It doesn't have that benefit. Yes, I've used a Solfus version to actually check a lot of the viabilities Actually, one versus a type of Lele due to that. But Stoutland, in its own right, it's faster, it's already bulky and hits hard. Stoutland is incredible, hands down. It's it's no competition here. In the league aspect, Stoutland is invaluable offensive threat that are so hard to check naturally. So it's just among one of the best Pokemons out there for any league aspect in a sand team, if anything. So with of course all this covered, you know, I'm gonna actually link also to my league wins with Stalin as I do believe you guys do to enjoy them and possibly appreciate Stalin. Uh, but quite frankly, I really want to know what you guys are thinking. I'm actually been I have a rough time uh, deciding what to bring against Stalin. I realized that Kangaskhan was his best suited because of how they are on par on Smogon. But like I said, in leagues. There are so many other aspects coming to mind that needs to be considered, and Stoutland stands out as one of the better low-tier Pokémon there. It actually, due to, of course, how invaluable is the Sand Team, it works in OU. I don't believe I see Kangaskhan ever do that, and that needs to be considered here. Stoutland is such a powerful threat that going adamant has now a power of damage output that are uncanny in that tier is... It needs to be respected, and Stoutland is one of the most incredible Pokémon. Not only is it my favorite, but it also is a very viable Pokémon in its own right, and I'm glad to have the luxury to be using it all this time. And I'm gonna miss you, buddy, going into Generation 8, knowing that you won't be there. Dear God, I'm gonna miss you, buddy. So with that said, guys, as always, thank you for watching, and um, hopefully next episode is gonna come out really soon. I have the episode planned, I just don't know the stats yet for it, the other Pokemon. And we don't know how to make this kind of development, so that comparison is going to be more blind if anything. But I really hope I get something out of it anyway. So that's the guy for you all watching, and take care if anything. And make sure you enjoy Pokemon Sword and Shield that comes out next week. Have a great day, buddy. Buddies. <laughs> Bye, guys.